Another brownout for blocks. Electric company couldn't get things straight. There was a bald head counting 20s at the entrance to a diner down the street. He smiled. The gold chain around his wide neck was motionless like his baldness in the breeze. They hit a thrift store to find her a dresser. Her clothes had been on the bedroom carpet too long. Today, she wore the tight red summer dress he loved, and it helped her drive a powerful bargain. She talked hired Mexicans down to their knees for a six-drawer mahogany heirloom she wanted. It was out of the shop and out of sight before the boss got back, paid for under the table. Will carried the entire heavy damn thing on his back, and she followed with three drawers and asked, Do you love me? He looked at the blur of her in salt and sweat, then swept his eyes back down to avoid broken glass on the sidewalk. Yes, I do. Will you say it? He hated how she cued him to express emotion and didn't reply. The edge of the dresser cut the blood from his fingers. Almost there, baby, just one more block, she said. You're so strong. As if that would make, on a scale of one to a hundred, where is your love for me any more tolerable to him? It's in my hands, that's where, he replied. He couldn't feel his fingers. He could feel his fear. Fear in his eyes, fear in his lies. Fear and surprise, fear of change. Fear when life stayed the same. Fear of the lawnmower, fear of getting run over. Fear the pits in the neighbor's yard that jump six feet for stakes hanging from limbs of a dead tree. Sometimes, though, Will had no fear. He would stay up all night with no fear of fatigue. And the girl who made the gate to his three-flat rattle, the one he wished he could love whole, Cass, would stay up with him and scare the daylight out of him, then cook him a grand breakfast of bacon, eggs, and chihuahua cheese then leave, and sleep would come into him, and he feared nothing again, and slept sound.